commitment, honesty, integrity, these are the core values that create the foundation for Umbrella. Umbrella Corporation Explored Resident Evil The Umbrella Corporation was a multinational conglomerate involved in various industries, from the sale of pharmaceuticals and cosmetics to transportation and tourism. The Umbrella Group started as a pharmaceutical company before developing biological weaponry for different armies worldwide. This was part of their plan to accumulate a collection of deadly viruses directly prohibited by the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention. Umbrella was able to hide its true motive by claiming that it was researching vaccines for these viruses. Some subsidiaries of the Umbrella Corporation include Umbrella Industries, which was involved in developing weapons that could counter bioorganic weapons. Their tourism company was called Paraguas Line Company, Paraguas meaning umbrella in Spanish, and it acted as a front for exporting viruses worldwide. Umbrella's true goal was not profit, it had its roots in the eugenics movement that arose in the 1960s. One of the guiding principles of the Umbrella Corporation was a eugenics project called the Wesker Plan, which intended to create an advantage advanced race of human beings. The Umbrella Corporation went bankrupt and collapsed in 2003 when they were held liable for compensation in the 1998 Raccoon City destruction incident. Now before we go further into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Well, let's begin. The Origins of Umbrella Corporation How did the company begin and what was its initial goal? The Umbrella Corporation was founded principally by the trio of Dr. Oswald E. Spencer, Dr. Edward Ashford and Dr. James Marcus. They were classmates at university and were all virologists with links to the eugenics movement at the time. The work of Umbrella begins with Dr. Marcus's hypothesis that a particular African flower known as the Stairway of the Sun exists that would grant mutagenic powers to its consumer due to the presence of a virus. However, flowers cultivated in the US could not replicate the initial findings. Thus, Umbrella Pharmaceuticals was formed so that these virus, called progenitor, samples could be sent over the Atlantic. In need of some financial assistance, the three principal founders agreed on a plan called the T-Virus Project, wherein they would develop strains of the progenitor virus and sell them to the US military as a weapon. At the end of the 1970s, work on the T-Virus Project advanced considerably due to the efforts of Dr. William Birkin. Initially, the virus was used used as a weapon of death, but now it was being reworked so that the victim of the virus wouldn't die but actually remain alive in a mentally damaged, hostile and cannibalistic state, capable of functioning even after a heart attack. The core objective of Umbrella was to give birth to a new generation of superhumans, enhanced by various viral mutations who would lead human civilization forward at the same time as being subservient to the founders of the Umbrella Corporation. Umbrella Corporation's Various Divisions and Their Activities The internal motto of Umbrella Corporation is stated as Obedience breeds discipline, discipline breeds unity, unity breeds power, and power is life. The official public motto that was listed on their website is this, preserving the health of the people. The Umbrella Corporation has also occasionally advertised under various slogans. The Umbrella Corporation is actually a conglomeration of seven major separate subsidiary businesses. The Paraguas Line Company company, which was established in the late 1980s around the Mediterranean Sea as a tourism company, was actually a front for transporting weapons. Umbrella Europe was a holding company in Europe, while Umbrella Japan Co. Limited was a holding company established in the 1980s in Japan. Umbrella USA is the third holding company, this time in the US, of the Umbrella Corporation. Umbrella Industries was chiefly reserved for weapon development, especially weapons that could counter bioorganic threats. Umbrella Medical Equipment, established before 1998, was primarily primarily for conducting medical research, while Umbrella Pharmaceuticals has been developing pharma products and bioweaponry since the 1960s. Umbrella has had great success in developing a wide range of commercial products, including the following. Adravil, which was based on the real-life drug Advil, ibuprofen, and Safsprin, based on aspirin, two popular Umbrella products. Umbrella's most beloved product, however, is called Aqua Cure. It's an ointment that's used on open wounds. The efficacy of the spray made it a very popular item. It's assumed that the tea virus is used in the preparation of this product, although no significant side effects have been seen. These products are made from herbs found in Raccoon City, as well as all across the world, even in places like Antarctica. Umbrella also manufactures weapons like the Linear Launcher, the Spark Shot, and the Charged Particle Rifle, among others. There are also a host of other products, including entire lines of cosmetics and soft drinks. Due to its existence as seven separate companies, the Umbrella Corporation is in control of a lot of land around the world. Not all of its facilities 
disease are revealed to the general public, but some notable examples are Rockford Island, a solitary island belonging to Ashford that contains a lab to create bioorganic weapons, Umbrella Waste Disposal Facility. This is located on an unnamed island in the Atlantic Ocean where the worst of Umbrella's failed experiments are disposed of. Umbrella Africa Laboratory, which is another secretive facility, was founded in the late 1960s where development of the progenitor virus was conducted. Initial research on the Ouroboros virus, another notorious creation of the conglomerate empire, was primarily attempted in this facility. There is also the Umbrella Lab, which is a top secret underground lab that only a few elite Umbrella executives know the existence of. It was once quarantined from a T-virus outbreak. Since Umbrella became multinational, it became necessary to own and utilize different types of paramilitary units to protect the stability of the company. These included the Umbrella Security Services, the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Services, Monitors, and the Undertaker Unit, more commonly referred to as Trash Sweepers. The Biohazard Countermeasure Service dealt with combating escaped bioweapons while the Trash Sweepers were signed to the removal of any sort of bioorganic evidence left under the shadow of the Umbrella organization, which might land them in trouble. The T-Virus The progenitor virus was discovered by Dr. Spencer, Ashford and Marcus at the end of the 20th century. The bulk of the research was done by Marcus because Ashford died in 1968 and Spencer was too busy managing the business side of Umbrella. Spencer made Marcus the director of Umbrella's training facility. However, Marcus soon became very greedy with power, investing huge amounts of money and resources, leading to some tensions between Marcus and Spencer. Spencer, in exchange for these vast resources, demanded a virus with a 100 100% effectiveness rate. This was, at the time, impossible for Marcus to do, who at this point was being assisted by new trainees Albert Wesker and William Birkin. Marcus was able to evolve the virus in such a way that the first effective large-scale bioweapon was born. By adding the virus to leeches, the attributes of both were synergistically combined, which led to the creation of the Tyrant Virus, also known as the T-Virus, in 1978. A breakthrough was thus reached by creating a new strain developed by splicing analid genes into the viral genome. The humans infected with the new strain did not die, but they became more aggressive and suffered from necrosis as well as cannibalistic impulses. At this point, Spencer became extremely paranoid and commanded Marcus's two assistants, Wesker and Birkin, to assassinate him. Though he was killed and his body thrown into a sewage plant, he didn't die. Through his experiments, he had developed a creature that had entered his body through his mouth and bonded with him, allowing him to generate into something superhuman. This creature came to be known as Queen Leech. After consuming Marcus's hippocampus. Queen Leech then unleashed his T-virus at the Arclay Research and Management Training Facilities and then on the company train Ecliptic Express. Marcus was ultimately killed by Rebecca Chambers and Billy Cohn after being weakened by sunlight. Most of the research for the T-virus happened at the Arclay Laboratory in Raccoon City. They were tested upon a solitary test subject, Lisa Trevor, who was used as a test subject to a huge amount of biological torture and yet managed to survive against all the odds. Several biological weapons were created as a backup to the virus to ensure a 100% death ratio. These included the Hunters, the Ivies, and the Chimeras, the elite tyrants, as well as infected dogs known as Cerberuses. The Hunters consisted of infected reptilians, Ivies were animal-like locomotive flowers, while Chimeras were a mixture between humans and flies. Dr. William Birkin further modified the virus by splicing RNA from the Ebola virus into the T-virus's genome in order to make it much more contagious while keeping most of its victims alive as zombies. In 1988, the development of the T-virus entered phase 3 with the goal to create reliable and intelligent bioorganic weapons. New viral strains were created, leading to the T plus G virus, T abyss, and T phobos, among others. Like other viruses, when T-virus came into contact with the cell's membrane, they insert their genetic coding into the cell. The cell absorbs the viral genome, which hijacks it and starts producing more T-virions like the original. There are several diseases that have been associated with the T-virus. One of them is called progenitor disease and possibly leads to a fatal cytokine storm. Another disease is cannibal disease, in which the patient undergoes enhanced survival mutations at the cost of brain damage and killing urges. There is also an unusual case of viral infection, where the patient gains superhuman abilities with very limited or no brain damage. Such patients include people like Sergei Vladimir and Albert Wesker. The T-virus can be transmitted through water, air, injection, and direct fluid transmissions.
The G virus. The Golgotha virus was a mutagenic retrovirus developed by Dr. William Birkin from Lisa Trevor's body. The G virus had regenerative effects and piqued the interest of Oswald Spencer due to its eugenic properties. When William Birkin was fatally wounded by USS operatives, he injected himself with a sample of the G virus, turning into a terrible monster known as G Monster. He was able to kill all the operatives except Hunk, escaping Raccoon City in the process. Unlike the T virus, the G virus grants its hosts high fertility fertility along with regenerative capabilities. Although healing properties are gained, intelligence is lost. The G-Virus is considered to be the most dangerous bioweapon in the Resident Evil universe. Sherry Birkin, William Birkin's daughter, on being infected by her father, was given the devil vaccine that prevented any mutations from happening, although she did keep the ability to regenerate. Apart from being directly injected into the host's body, as in the case of William Birkin, another method for transmission includes implanting the G-Embryo in a host, leading to G larvae. Depending on how close the DNA of the host matches the infected, the larvae will either be rejected or will assimilate inside the host. How did Umbrella Corporation affect the story and characters in the Resident Evil franchise? In the 80s and 90s, as Umbrella's power grew, the trio of founding fathers found themselves at odds with one another. Dr. Ashford was killed at the hands of his own creation in a T-virus accident that is believed to have been orchestrated by Dr. Spencer. Soon, Umbrella Corporation grew to such a size that regional subsidiaries were required to run the company efficiently. This led to the creation of Umbrella USA. Similarly, Umbrella Europe was formed with the project Nemesis in mind, which would create an intelligent parasite to counteract the brain damage caused by the T-Virus and Umbrella USA's failure to resolve this issue. Aside from these two chief continental groups, there was also Umbrella Japan Co. Limited, which oversaw biotechnology research. In the early 90s, the fall of the Soviet Union allowed Umbrella to increase its paramilitary forces. Umbrella successfully infiltrated the US Army by planting moles such as Dr. Albert Wesker. Umbrella held such sway over governments that incidences and outbreaks would be covered up with no investigations. News reporters who investigated these issues would usually end up dead under mysterious circumstances. By 1998, Umbrella's position of power had slightly waned because of internal destabilizing issues as well as industrial espionage. Umbrella USA had been infiltrated by Chinese spies such as Ada Wong, who acted on behalf of Umbrella's rival company. A decisive blow to Umbrella came in May 1998, when there was an outbreak at an Arclay laboratory. The entire facility was put under lockdown, but a few Cerebruses escaped and killed a few hikers in the mountains, leading to some of them turning into zombies. Albert Wesker was put in charge of the Umbrella-funded police team of Raccoon City, and Umbrella gave orders to Wesker to destroy the incredible incriminating evidence, but Wesker defected to the rival company, having faked his own death. In a similar vein, Dr. Birkin had also taken the decision to leave Umbrella. He had made plans to hand himself over to the US military with samples of viruses. Birkin was shot by the USS Alpha team under Hunk, but he still had virus samples in his possession and turned into a powerful monster called G. Raccoon City's hospitals were soon flooded with cases of cannibal disease. Due to the water contamination, the virus spread to tens of thousands of people, and a decision was taken to destroy the city with an experimental fuel air bomb. The US Congress voted to ban Umbrella USA from doing business in the country, and the president himself resigned due to the public sentiment against his decision to bomb Raccoon City. The US Department of Defense set up an anti-Umbrella pursuit and investigation team. Umbrella's training camps were destroyed by their rival company's paramilitary group, and the company found it increasingly difficult to keep employees in line due to the loss of its prison complexes in Rockford and Sheena. The final blow to Umbrella came in February 2003 when its facility in the Caucasus was attacked by Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, who managed to reach the facility's underground chamber and defeat Umbrella's final weapon, Talos, after being dispatched by Sergei Vladimir. In the meantime, Wesker managed to extract all the data from Umbrella's Red Queen supercomputer and destroyed the entire system. Due to the anonymous data provided by Wesker, Umbrella was found guilty and it declared bankruptcy. A worldwide manhunt ensued for Spencer. Although Umbrella was destroyed, its influence remained. In 2005, its T-virus was used in a bioterrorist attack at Harvardville Airport because Frederick Downing had stolen virus samples and fled Raccoon City. In 2007, Umbrella's USA assets were handed over to the former employees of the original company and formed into Blue Umbrella. Blue Umbrella's purpose is to atone for the crimes of its old executive and salvage Umbrella's legacy by creating weapons and technology for good rather than evil.
some of the notable figures associated with the Umbrella Corporation. Oswald Edward Spencer. He was one of the founders of Umbrella and an overarching villain in the Resident Evil franchise. He is rarely seen, but he's a man of great wealth and power who has a hobby of collecting art. Spencer was a student of Mother Miranda and was inspired to create a new world of mankind with him as the ruler through his research into bioorganic weapons. After Umbrella lost its court case in the US, Spencer went into hiding in his European estate. He revealed to Wesker that he was the result of genetic experimentation with the progenitor virus, along with thousands of others known as Wesker children. Upon learning his vision to rule the world as a god, Wesker kills Spencer before Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield can arrive. James Marcus Dr. James Marcus was also one of the founders of Umbrella and a main antagonist in the Resident Evil franchise, sometimes appearing posthumously. He was the creator of the original T-Virus as well as a mentor to Albert Wesker and William Birkin. He was betrayed by his students and ordered to be assassinated by Spencer. Being resurrected as Queen Leech, Marcus wanted to get revenge by unleashing the T-Virus in Arclay Mountains, leading to the eventual downfall of Umbrella and Spencer. He was killed by Rebecca Chambers and Billy Cohen, although he ultimately did end up succeeding in his revenge. Edward Ashford Edward Ashford was a British virologist who was one of the founders of Umbrella Pharmaceuticals. He formed the plan for the T-Virus project with Marcus and Spencer. He worked with his son Alexander at a laboratory in Antarctica. Ashford died in an accident masterminded by Spencer due to infection from the progenitor virus. His bloodline is stated to have been cursed. Albert Wesker Dr. Albert Wesker is one of the main villains in the Resident Evil franchise, who was a high-ranked member of the Umbrella Corporation, also serving as a mole in the US Army. Wesker would ultimately go on to betray Umbrella and seek world domination, but would be stopped in his tracks by Chris Redfield. He exerts a lot of posthumous influence in the Resident Evil franchise through his son, Jake Muller. He was responsible for the creation of the Ouroboros virus. William Birkin Dr. William Birkin was an influential member of the Umbrella Corporation, where he and his wife were responsible for the creation of the G-Virus. He was also a friend and rival of Albert Wesker, whom he helped transform into a superhuman creature. During the Raccoon City incident at the point of dying, Birkin injected himself with the G-Virus, becoming a terrible monster known as G. He gets into an intense fight with Leon and Claire on a train and is ultimately engulfed in the flames of an underground explosion. Alexander Ashford Alexander Ashford was the son of Edward Ashford and helped his father conduct research on the progenitor virus. He became obsessed with the family's matriarch, Veronica Ashford, and combined her DNA with a dangerous gene that increased intelligence, along with his own, in order to create two twins, Alfred and Alexia. Ultimately, his own creation used him as a test subject for the T. Veronica virus, turning into a mysterious monster called Nosferatu. Nosferatu is ultimately killed by Claire Burnside. Alexia Ashford Alexia Ashford, along with her brother Alfred, was a genius clone created by Alexander Ashford using his family's matriarch's DNA, his own, as well as a dangerous gene for increasing intelligence. Alexia created the T. Veronica virus and used it to transform her creator into the monster Nosferatu. She then went into a 15-year-long cryogenic rest in order to harness its power. Alexia would ultimately be defeated by Chris Redfield. Alfred Ashford Alfred Ashford was the brother of Alexia Ashford and a result of the experimentation of Alexander Ashford. Unlike his genius sister, Alfred was only slightly more than average in intelligence. Alfred helped create Alexia to lock herself away in a cryogenic state. With Alexander and Alexia declared dead to the public, Alfred legally became the seventh Earl of the Ashford family. He was gravely wounded by Steve Burnside and died at the hands of his sister. Marvelous Verdict The legacy of the Umbrella Corporation in the Resident Evil universe is one of destruction and chaos. The viruses created by the company led to the development of a number of bioweapons. The company's unethical practices and blatant disregard for human life led to numerous tragedies, including the destruction of Raccoon City and the deaths of countless innocent people. The Umbrella Corporation believed it could control the forces of nature and bend them to their will. This is what led to their downfall. Later in the series, the legacy of Umbrella Corporation becomes a cautionary tale as other organizations seek to exploit the same magnitude of technology and power. Ultimately, the tale of the Umbrella Corporation is one of warning, as it shows the dangers of unchecked scientific progress and the consequences of playing God with the forces of nature. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Respect.